only a piece of this. This is too long and it's going to be stupid right out of the gate, I promise. But you can understand when I show you this, the thumbnail. God damn it. You're watching Hal Sparks Mega Worldwide. Don't forget to like, subscribe, support the show. Patreon.com slash Hal Sparks. Uh, you get to join the Discord server. You get my comedy show this weekend will be streamed to you. Uh, it's a, and then if you come live to a show, you, it's you and a guest for free. You, to any of my stand-up shows. And I'm working on Nerd Halen. We'll make that happen. Also, uh, Saturday, at, I'm at Flappers in Burbank. Tuesday, huge, huge Ultimate Jam Night. If I do say so, my damn self. If I may. Give me one second. So far, here's a short list of some of the folks that are going to be there. Scott Ian from Anthrax. Pearl of Day from Motor Sister. Uh, Chloe Trujillo, Lula uh, Trujillo, and Robert Trujillo. Hopefully, if he can make it, that's the question. Uh, we're waiting on confirmation from him, from Metallica. Uh, the band Candlebox is all going to be there to jam on songs. Uh, Phil Demel from Violence and Machine Head. Caesar Soto from Ministry. The guys from Bullet Boys are going to be there. Love you, Mark. You're a sweetheart. Uh, Chuck Wright. Um, um, Doug Pinnock from King's X is going to be there. I hope we get to do Dogman. I'm very excited. I want to I want to at least sing the... Because we're it's to benefit an animal sanctuary. So I was like, we should do... So I can do the Thai part. Um, Ira Black, from uh, who plays with Bullet Boys and uh, Violence. Um, and he's a good dude. Marco Mendoza from Whitesnake and Thin Lizzy. Sean McNabb from Dawkin, who's great. Ricky ben, uh, Benazza. And by the way, Ricky and I uh, um, did did a song together. I posted it before um, uh, Fall Awake. If you haven't seen it, I recommend it. It's Yeah. All right. Um, uh, Joe Travers, who is wonderful. Uh, Jake Fawn, who's from Winger and is fantastic. Revel Ian, who I believe is related to Scott. Um Let's see, Mechanical Roots, uh, Adi Argalazi, who's in a band called White Witch, and she won The Voice, or uh, the Israel's Got Talent. She was like The Voice in Israel. She, that's what she won in that. And then there's this guy, Hal Sparks, who's hosting it, who's going to sing a couple of tunes, including It's a Long Way to the Top, If You Want to Rock and Roll, which, and the answer to the question is, yes, yes, we will have a bagpipe, bagpipe player for the show. It's going to be very exciting. So, um... That's it. Support the show. Help us happen. And uh, there you go. Yes. Dogman is an amazing song if you haven't heard it. Um, the album Dogman is fantastic. And um, Flies in Blue Skies and uh, Cigarettes. I mean, it's just such a great album. Anyways, how will you do Cameo again? I want one for my birthday. Um, yes, you know they've been bugging me again to do that... Um, the, the app has been barking at me again because it stopped working for a while. And I guess now it's back to working. So very possibly. I will, I'll see what I can do. I, you know, I'm not ready to commit fully, but I will try. Mr. Bojangles, thank you so much. Hal Sparks from my little Black Panther lunatic rose for Chud's vet bill. Oh, that, uh, she approves of this message. Ah, oh, lunatic rose is the name of your black cat. That's amazing. That's fantastic. Um, so, okay, here we go. Last one. Just, we're going to do a slice of this because I can't do the whole fucking thing because I will just, I'll be here all goddamn night. Look at this idiocy. War with China by 2025. <laughs> um, uh, um, yes, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Cowboy Glenn, uh, um, Glenn Beck on his way to a hoedown. We've got a hoedown. We'll pick her up. Um, uh, is apparently thinking there's going to be war with China by 2025. Here it comes. War with China. China war. Chinese war. Here comes the China war. Earlier this morning, um, you On the phone, Christopher from USA. This is the, I guess a caller calls in. On the phone, Christopher. And so, clearly a true American. Absolutely not an anonymous uh, yapper. And certainly not a member of his staff posing as someone just to make it look like they have callers. China made a threat yesterday. Yeah. To the United States, and I'd love to know what that is. Okay. He said, China made a threat. You said China made a threat yesterday to the United States, and I would like to know what that is. Okay. Well, let me, you're going to love it. It <laughs> may not improve your mood much, but... Uh, <laughs> They said that um, uh, they are now, hang on just a second, I got to get right.
Yeah, just find it. Uh, we'll wait. Right to it. Uh, that they are now special partners. Uh, and that change with Russia, with Russia mm -hmm. and uh, change is coming. This is according to Z. Change is coming that hasn't happened in over a hundred years, and we will drive this change together. Uh huh. Um, then, <laughs> oh, it's gonna be it's gonna be one of these things, isn't it? It's fucking gonna be one of those things. Hold on, let's look this up. China. Changes, map, names. Uh, okay. Um, <laughs> this is, uh, let's see. Yeah, um, this is, uh, this is them getting together. China challenges Russia by restoring Chinese names of cities on their border. This is, uh, so um, they started referring to, you know, because they, fought a war over land to their north and Russia won big chunks of territory. And uh, these these Chinese areas were given Russian names and the like. And the Chinese just issued an order. Um, yeah, here it is. Uh, the Asia Times noted on February 25th that it's ironic that while releasing a peace plan this week, which conspicuously fails to say clearly whether Moscow should withdraw its troops from Ukraine's Donbass region in Crimea, China this very month made a politically sensitive change in its official worldview, a change that affects Russia. It elaborates that under Beijing's new directive, Vladivostok, once again, is called Hai Xinhuai, meaning Sea Cucumber Bay, while uh, Sakhalin Island is called uh, the Stanovoy Range is back to being called the Outer Xing'an Range in Chinese. Uh, China lost large expanses of land in its northern region due to the invasion of uh, Russian forces. And now Beijing has directed a return to the use of the Chinese names for them. It also notes that despite Beijing seemingly wanting to strengthen its ties with Russia, it has permitted Chinese columnists to public art, publish articles from time to time about the vast territories lost to foreign powers, thereby in effect reminding Chinese people of their wish to recover the lost territory. Because I got news for you. It will be easier for Xi Jinping to cover his own ass for failing to take Taiwan by taking land that was formerly grabbed by Russia once Russia fails in Ukraine or Putin dies or is toppled. They will literally just move in. That's that. If they can help this, then be toppled. Oh, thanks so much. Uh... For the for becoming a patron, oh my gosh, that's so fantastic! Bless you for becoming a a, a year long patron. Thanks very much. Um, so, uh, yeah, they're gonna they're buddies, they're partners. Yeah. Um, they also said that there is a new era. Um, by the way, this is a threat. Let's hear the threat. Special relationship and a no limits friendship. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's kind of a one-sided no-limits friendship. Because uh, the pegs only go in one direction. Between Moscow and Beijing. Mm-hmm. Should I... Uh, yeah, hey, guys, you think I should show them the Belt and Road Initiative map real quick? I love this. This is one of my favorites. Here it is. Uh, let's get this. I'm going to try to get it bigger. If I can pull this. There we go. Yeah. So um, this is the overland road of the Belt and Road Initiative. These are trains that go through Kazakhstan and all this stuff. And, and it changes directions in Kazakhstan right here. It goes right through. Who is that? Right through there. So... The Chinese plan on owning these trade routes at, in their future. One of which includes, by the way, and everybody else like Kenya and all these other places are like, yeah, f like India has already told them to fuck off. Th these have fallen apart. This, this thing that right here, J this Jakarta part goes up to here and now goes around Colombo all the way up to 
like did you bo- like to Africa up here and then down south. But it does not by any means touch India where it was going to. I think they may be working on the Pakistan port again, but they India is going to have a problem with these boats right here, fishing in their waters, stealing their resources. It's a big problem. So the idea that somehow China is going to do that, that's falling apart. This part, though, up here, see where Moscow is? See that? Imagine if you would, if, if uh, I don't know, if, if the Mexican government or the South America decided to have a, like a, like an SU, a, a South American Union, like the EU, and they got together and they said, we're going to have, uh, eventually, our plan is to go to Toronto, so have, you know, trade with Toronto, and we're going to use a train that goes straight through Washington, D.C., how do you think that would be received by the parties involved? So that's uh, they went, that's not a threat, and you're a dumb. Went on to specifically talk about a, a unipolar world. Yeah, they said right? they uh, they both are fighting against a unipolar world, uh, and uh, and uh, so what? There isn't a unipolar world, by the way. The United States and the EU have to partner on everything. And we have the UN, for example. It's not unipolar. The idea, by the way, it's artificially unipolar in terms of the fact that China and Russia are on the Security Council, which is nuts. Are for a multipolar world. So they're gathering together, basically, to to defeat us, which is... Oh, man, yeah. that's great. It was a typical, like, China bureaucratic speak, but it was pretty clear as far as, as China oh, goes in, in saying that yeah. they're changing the last century dynamic they don't like so much. Yes. Yeah. Good luck. Um, now, here's, um, here's something else. Um, yeah, because that didn't work. Uh, Putin also made some uh, threats yesterday. Uh-huh. yesterday. Did he? Um, apparently, the Pentagon is accelerating our Patriot air defense systems and tanks to Ukraine, which Putin doesn't like. Boo, fuckity who? Well, here, uh, Glenn, tell him, tell us all why Vladimir Putin should be able to dictate American military support of our allies. Go ahead. All that much. Um, and then... Um, the UK Minister of uh, State Defense said, you know, we have a real problem with, you know, what, uh, what Britain is about to do. They're, they're sending in Challenger 2 battle tanks uh, and they're sending. So the UK has a problem with what they're about to do themselves? Them into Ukraine with armor piercing rounds, which contains depleted Ukra- uh, uranium. Yeah, depleted Ukrainians. They're just all worn out. Yeah, that with uh, whatever Lukashenko from uh, Belarus was clamoring about this. If this happens, and I'm quoting, Russia will have to respond accordingly, given that the West collectively is already beginning to use weapons with a nuclear component. Oh, get the fuck out of here. Russia uses them. Already. Okay. Okay. Well, let's hear. Hold on one second. Pop this out. Open like the new tab. Pop this down here. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. Then let's see. Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> Whoops, jump back. Hold on. Wrong page. Give me one second. This guy. Here you go. They already use them themselves. This is December. This is Christmas 2020. This is in Syria. Russia is arming its tanks with controversial depleted uranium shells. They already have them. The Ukrainians do not. Uh, and on top of that, UK accuses Russia of disinformation over, de over depleted uranium because they're saying it's, you know, nuclear weapons. We're sending nuclear weapons. Anybody who, look, remember our soldiers having, you know, uh, like issues with maybe possible that lead to birth defects and other stuff if they have children because they're walking around with a rifle with depleted uranium hanging over their gonads all fucking day. Z is sitting next to Putin when he says this. She. X-I. Not Z. Dum dum. For fuck's sake. By the way, these, th these shells, they're armor piercing it's not unusual, from what I understand, to use these shells. That's what Britain uses for bunker-busting uh, bombs. It's about gun ammo, stupid. Depleted uranium. It, it does hurt the soil around there, and if you were hit by one, I mean, well, if you are hit by one, you're probably going to die. But if you got shrapnel from it, it would have radiation uh, in it. So that's good. Hey, here's another one. Australia came out yesterday and said, we're not going to promise that we'll side with the United States of America should China go into Taiwan. What? What? Yeah, we're not expecting them to. Australia is peeling itself from us? Yeah, hold on. Let's let's uh, citation needed. Okay, Australia will not uh, back U.S. Taiwan. Blah, blah. Okay, it's not committed. Okay, uh, three days ago. This is it. Um, absolutely did not promise to support the U.S. in a military combat in return for the. Oh, I see. So, um, you you might get the feeling that uh. That we did this, we're only giving them access to this information if they promise to do, you know, to act as a puppet state for us. Mm, that's not how it works. Australia did not vow to help U.S. defend Taiwan in submarine deal, minister says. Is that the same thing as saying they won't? No, it just means did not promise to support the U.S. in any military conflict over to, in any military conflict over Taiwan in return for a deal to acquire U.S. nuclear power to attack submarines. Yeah. They did, we didn't give it to them and say, we'll only give you these if you join us in an attack on China if it happens. We wouldn't ask anybody to do that. That's just dumb. They're not peeling off. This is idiocy. Anyways, continue. Russia yesterday also said, Med Medvedev uh, said that uh, the ICC, the International Criminal Court, they love it as much as we do. Uh, except we've never said, by the way, if you um, if you do issue an arrest warrant for uh, Vladimir Putin, uh, we might strike the ICC with a hypersonic missile <laughs> missile, which I think would be another war crime. But I I, I don't know um, there. Ru Russia is running out of soldiers. Uh, you know, they they had prisoners that they had pardoned pardoned. And no, they didn't pardon them. Uh, but guys. Those that are regularly with me on the show, you guys have watched these details that he is talking about play out on the show. We have discussed these things in depth, both with Philip on the show and with stories that have come up with, you know, details I've hunted down for you. Not unlike what I just showed you, which is the, the idea is that is not that Australia will not support us. It's that they didn't make a deal to support us automatically if we give them nuclear powers. They can decide for themselves as a sovereign nation whether to join us. It was not a protection racket, uh, it, which would be a very Trump deal. And that's what people asked. And the Chinese are going to ask the Australians this. And they're going to go, no, we didn't agree to just do this. 
but we might decide on our own. Fuck you. But we've watched all these stories like play out. And if you, he does this for a living. Like you could say to some degree that my lovely little show here is certainly more than a hobby now, but it started out that way. But this motherfucker has been doing this for decades. Have you ever seen anyone in this incapable of retaining basic facts about stories he talks about all the fucking time? And uh, most of them died, but about 20% of them now have served their six months and are going home. So you got some really violent criminals that have been par uh, pardoned. Oh, and they also, they just came out of war. That tends to stabilize you know, crazy, dangerous people. So they're going home. Uh, they fought for the Wagner group. Uh, now, Wagner. Now they don't know what to do. They've already made the enlistment to 65 years old in Russia. And now they're recruiting in high school. So that's good. So here's the problem. Yeah, here's the problem. You've been backing Russia this whole time. You've been clamoring on about how Ru Ukraine kind of had this coming. And now what? You're supposed to drop like many details that most of us have been talking about for a, the better part of a fucking year. China, I believe, before 2025, before the next president is sworn in, you will have a digital currency. I hope I'm wrong on all, you are. all of these things. I You'll, yes, we're, cash is gone. It'll be all digital currency from now. Everything's going to be paid for with a Starbucks app. Motherfucker. I hope I'm wrong on all of these things. You'll have a digital currency. <laughs> well, it definitely won't be crypto. China will be in Taiwan and we'll we'll be tied up in a major war. That's, I think that is a done deal because why wouldn't you? Well, let's just start with Taiwan has a functioning military and government all its own. It has the ability to defend itself. It's actually been shored up more than Ukraine has previous, uh, prior to Russia's invasion. They have been prepping for this for a long time. The Chinese are always threatening this. There are more Marines on the beach now than when Biden took office because he's having them there as trainers. Also, the Chinese, if they sent every fucking fishing boat full of people to try and overwhelm Taiwan with human beings just with single-shot rifles, they would lose a million people right away. Taiwan's not going to surrender immediately. They're going to fight. They have, they are going to be, there are mountains like in Taiwan that they can fire from, you dumb fuck. The, the Americans and everybody will know a week before China actually decides to do it. The Taiwanese will be steeled against it. They're going to lose a million. And then again, if they take over Taiwan, they are going to have to kill everybody there. Everybody. That's why. If you were China, America is at the tipping point. We are so divided as a nation. Our yeah, that's what Putin thought, dumb fuck. And then he went into Ukraine and he's having his ass handed to him. You just told us how they're recruiting Russian soldiers from fucking high school because that dumb son of a bitch thought that he could roll in and do this like the six-day war of the Israelis in 1964. Five, four, three, two, one. It, in that era. Jesus. Banking system. The entire West. Is okay. Our banking system is fine. What, what the shit? I, these, these fucking crypto over-leveraged regional banks are, are a reflex from the FTX fallout and all the bullshit hype around crypto in the first fucking place. This people, there's not a run on fucking JP Morgan Chase or Wells Fargo or any of that shit. What are you talking about? We if we weren't if they didn't attack in 2009, they're not going to.
God damn, this is stupid. Is just waiting for a little to completely collapse. All right, Chuck Manson. No, it isn't. You have states. And by the way, look how kind of happy he is about that idea. Jesus. Fighting against states. You, you have. You have states fighting against states. Yeah, that's never had it happened in American history. States fighting with states. Complete unrest at your fingertips. And yet. So, so you're saying they missed an opportunity during January 6th or during the George Floyd protests? Uh, you know, because if we're that close, wouldn't both of those been the wouldn't those have been the fucking triggers? As a matter of fact, more people are reticent to engage in this shit because both of those things happened. You dumb son of a bitch! All over the West. The all yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. This asshole thinks that uh, the LAUSD janitor strike is a sign of the failure of our society. We learned what Ronald Reagan did to the Soviet Union. Why would we not be doing that to them if it was reversed? Why wouldn't we do that to China? Of course we would. No. We wouldn't. You think that they're not going to do that with us? Uh, no, I think they might try. I think they're going to fail. And I think they're recalculating if they ever did have that thought because they saw what happened to Vladimir Putin. And look how they've already infiltrated. I got to say, congratulations, infiltrated. Governor Whitmer. Mm. You've done a bang up job. You really have. You know, she's created a whole bunch of new jobs. And I just think this is this is wonderful. Uh, she's she's funding seven hundred and fifteen million dollars taxpayer dollars. Um, to get this new, I think it's Goiton, maybe G O T I O N, Go Goitin. I, I don't know. It's a company that I just love because now it's an American company. And Gretchen Whitmer is spending Michigan. You should be proud. She's spending your dollars bringing these people in because they're going to create jobs. They just bought 700 acres of property near Big Rapids. Now, you know, Whitmer might have said, I don't know if we should do business with a Chinese company. Okay, so let's see what he's talking about here. And let's see if, uh, let's see, Whitmer, Michigan. Did he say $715 million? Uh, let's see. Apparently, Whitmer, Michigan, uh, is it Guotian? Is that what he said? Um, Gautian? Nope. Uh, Whitmer, uh, Chinese company, acres, I don't know, whatever the fuck. Rural Michigan communities revolt over plans to build. This is Fox News. Oh, for an EV battery plant. Okay, here we go. Michigan, oh, Michigan okay, $715 million incentives, incentive package for EV battery plant that passed up Illinois. Chinese manufacturer uh, Goshen um, chose the rap, uh, Big Rapids area over competing sites in Illinois, Ohio, South Carolina, Georgia, Texas, and Kentucky. Huh. Uh, Michigan, okay. Uh, this is, why is this shut down? Crane, that's Crane Chicago business. Let's get another one. Rural, here you go. Rural com Michigan communities revolt over plans to build Chinese-owned factories nearby. It's disgusting. Community members rip uh, plans for the plant in a recent local town board meeting. Okay, I mean, more than 100 residents in Green Charter Township, Rapids, uh, what do I say? Uh, thing that drives me most crazy is that this is a Chinese-owned company. Chinese-owned company is a communist company. Why would you bring a communist company to Big Rapids, Michigan, when we have troops mobilizing right now to fight China? One resident who identified himself as an Iraq War veteran told the town's board members. Why would you come, invite the company to come, uh, the enemy to come spy on us? All the things... 
on here are bad, but the thing that drives me the most nuts is that this is our enemy, not the Chinese people. I have nothing against the Chinese people because they suffer under the same communism that you're trying to bring here. It's disgusting. Er, um, quote as well, Big Rapids commun communist. Uh, the residents who spoke out against the Big Rapids communist Chinese battery plant were clear, focused, and on point. Town leaders would do well to listen to them. Uh, yeah, here they are. They are the Chinese. They're coming here. Um, not all members of the community uh, oppose the project. Uh, some of its supporters have touted the thousands of jobs we've brought to the area. Uh, yeah, but communist jobs with communist paychecks. Um, hold on. <laughs> uh, Goshen battery, something like that. Um, hmm. About Goshen. Located in the heart of Silicon Valley, Goshen is a fast-growing energy solutions company that aims to innovate and create the next generation battery technology. What drives us? A simple thought, really, in the near future. There you go. Goshen, eh, Cato Road. Uh, they have uh, located Independence, F Fremont, uh, Shanghai, Scuba, and Singapore. So they have one Chinese office in Shanghai. Uh, Fremont, California. Independence, uh, Ohio has a place there. Shanghai, uh, Tsukuba in uh, Amakubo in Japan, it's Singapore, and then Germany. They Gotingen like that, but the primary is in Fremont. Um, let's see the company. Let's see uh, where's should we have it located? To give careers products. Let's see what they make. Next generation energy storage electronics battery packs. Safe, reliable, well-developed electronic mean and natural standards and blah, blah, blah. Battery packs there. Energy storage. Large off-the-shelf storage for peak sh uh, shaving reserve or load leveling. Um, their, their offices are in Fremont, California. And then that would lead to somebody going, no, they're not that bad. I mean, let's look at their bylaws. And if you look at their bylaws and you're like, oh, okay. Yeah, they're not, I mean, they're just making widgets or whatever it is that they're going to be making. So they're. Why look it up? Why, why bother? It took me an eighth of a second. They're fine. Except in their articles of association, which is their company's bylaws, uh, Article 9 says the company shall set up a party organization and carry out party activities. Whoa, Party City is going to be. Mm hmm. Hold on one second. See, uh, solution careers, locations, company. Let's go to company. Uh, what drives us? Is there a bylaws written in here? I don't see them on their website. They're obviously hiding them from us. Uh, contact us, careers. Uh, let's see, Goshen. Oh, let's look up Goshen bylaws. Hold on one second. Um, Um, let's see, let's see, eight hours ago, the document found on Goshen's website lays out the company's governance structure and allegiance to the constitution of the communist party of China. This is the Midwestern news. Here you go. This is what these, he's referring to. Michigan funded battery maker mandates allegiance to the constitution of the communist party of China company bylaws said that, uh, uh, Goshen, the Chinese company purchasing 700 acres near Bear, uh, big rapids published a 94 page document titled articles of association. Uh, essentially the equivalent of an American company's bylaws. The document found on Goshen Weather lays out a company's governance structure, allegiance to the Constitutional and Communist Party of China. It also states the company shall set up a party organization, carry out party activities in accordance with the Constitution of the Communist Party. Uh, yeah, because you can't do business in Shanghai unless you do. Um, that was the party committee's sole purpose to ensure the company is adhering to Communist Party doctrine and furthering its objectives, the party committee, blah, blah, blah. Ensure and supervise implements of the party's guidelines, principles, and policies in the company and implementing major strategies. CPC general, oh, and they're even calling it the CPC. That's one of the the fixits by um, um, the Chinese communist, the CCP. They wants to be called the CPC so that when you look it up online, you don't find all the hateful, awful shit the CCP's done for years. Um, he was a researcher in the Economic Research Center of Haifa, uh, Hefei, 
municipal government and delegated 1340 to go uh 86 central intelligence agency briefing on provincial organizations made public in 2011 identifies individuals who hold positions on provincial level in the chinese communist party legislated yeah because they everybody's on board with the chinese secondary company it doesn't mean they can carry out shit in the united states whatever Carpet rule to strengthen construction of CCP organization and party members at the grassroots level of the company. Meaning if you work there, you're going to make you wear a coolie hat. Be raking in the box. They got a party committee and they have to, they have to have party activities. Sounds good until you finish the sentence in accordance with the constitution of the communist party of China. Then the party committee, not to be uh, confused with cake and balloons, uh, the party committee of the company shall perform its duties in accordance with the constitution of the Communist Party of China and other party regulations, including ensure and supervise the implementation of the party's guidelines, principles, and policies in the company. Yeah, I, one quick question uh, about this whole communism thing. Uh, this will be a factory with employees and these people can quit and, uh, they will be paid a salary and benefits based on the community standards or the state and federal standards of the country or state that they are in. And so besides the hats... What's communist about it? And implement major strategic decisions of the CPC, the Communist Party of China, Central Committee, and the State Council as relevant, important work arrangements of the party organization at the higher level. Okay, but here's the really great part that I think Governor Whitmer, I mean, I've... By the way, do you think this motherfucker knows that this company already has offices in California and in Japan and in Singapore. It's just the location. So hold on one second. Uh, Independence, Ohio. Maybe that, maybe you should have looked into that. Maybe they blew up the train. Maybe it was near, perhaps could be, no. Shanghai, uh, Scuba and uh, Singapore. There you go. I've spoken out against you honestly I, I thought you were a uh, crazy uh, tyrant or dictator uh, that uh, really didn't have the best interest of the people in Michigan at heart but now that I read this I know that the governor and the senators and all of the congress people from Ohio are clearly in on it including Jim Jordan obviously Ohio is a commie state they've had they don't have, they've had a place there forever. The corporate Jesus. document also states the company's party committee. By the way, you have to have a document like this if you have an office in Shanghai and you're a Chinese company. You don't get to not have it. Shall and it's also not how you carry out what you do in other countries if they have laws against it. But please continue. And I'm quoting. Strengthen the construction of party organization and party members at the grassroots level and oversee growing the Communist Youth League and mass work of the company. I now think you actually might be a traitor or you're completely incompetent. Let's see. Go to the locations. Um, Goshen Independence, Ohio. <clears throat> there you go. Uh, Independence, Ohio. They, they're hiring. They need a research scientist, an associate scientist, and an associate chemist uh, full time. Just saying. Um, let's see when, let's see, let me find out when, uh, company. Yeah. Let's, okay. Hold on. I'm trying to find the. Mm-hmm. 
I always have to try it. And like industry.net has it. What is, let's see. What is it like to work at Goshen uh, from Glassdoor? Yeah, they get three and a half. They get 3.1 stars. Um, competent colleagues, free lunch during work days. There are no cons displaying the good engineering team. Uh, recommend CEO approval. Business outlook looks good. Great engineering team. Always try to innovate. Working on avant-garde BMS project. Uh, strong support from the battery manufacturers. Con senior leadership, not transparency about decisions. Lackluster finance admin. Compensation can be improved. Uh, don't interview for this company. Nothing at all. This company has none. Uh, too many to share. They bait and switch you. They don't have hybrid, even though the, uh, the interview process says they do. You know, like work from home or whatever. Those kind of things. Good people, bad management, happy employee, friendly culture with good compensation. There's nothing God to me. Bad. These are really no pros. Company didn't take it account. It account? Any issues many of my employees may. They are financially unstable. Management is bad and they will go under soon. Leave soon. <laughs> um, okay. Um, that's uh, it's, that's the, the place in Ohio anyways. Um Goshen Company profile on Dan Dan yeah. Let's see. Goshen Headquarters, a global approach to vehicle electric. Thank you, Goshen. Oh, here's a Facebook post uh, from the Independence Fire Department in Ohio. Thank you, Goshen, for the demonstration today on the flammability of lithium metals and lithium ion batteries. Call us if you need us. We'll be there. <laughs> they brought people down and went, hey, these, uh, these electric batteries we make, kaboom. Uh, staff accountant too. Let's see. Goshen jobs built in operations, uh, jobs. Maybe there's, n um, news about them. Let's just check it out. This is, uh, developers lay. Oh, big red government witness to embark on first economic investment. Whitmer calls for special election. Parents protest, uh, you know, CRT 21 day, uh, Bishop, uh, Michigan, Trump critic quits Republican. Oh, that's fun. Um, the only ones that come up when I look at this Goshen Independence, Ohio, is uh, developers lay out 2350 job plan for Big Rapids battery parts. That plant, that's it. Governor Whitmer to embark on first economic investment. Whitmer calls for special election for vacant house seats. Michigan re U.S. Rep Amash, uh, a Trump critic. Um, this is 2019. Quits. The, and then all the way back. Here you go. Jan 11, 2022. Parents protest Farmington High School board meeting over CRT. 21-day equity challenge. Um, yeah, so I don't know why he's not attacking Ohio. You'll have to ask him. How did the governor of Ohio just do a deal years ago with taxpayer money to sell land and help a Chinese company? You mean like Foxconn when Trump was touting that in, in Wisconsin? I'm fucking with you. Develop their youth program, their communist youth program. Well, they don't. That's something they have to do in Shanghai. They got to agree to do that there. They can't even open a business. Oh, do you think anybody would say anything if, if, if the governor of Ohio did something like this? Oh, you know, down south, somebody made a deal and they, part of their bylaws was to make sure you develop that Hitler youth uh, program. I I wouldn't dig around in some of the electioneering in the panhandle if that's a worry. Yeah, I think people would have a cow. This is the same thing, except it's Stalin. It's Mao. Yeah, it's more Mao than Stalin, but sure. It's not Hitler. I still think it's bad, though. I mean, I don't get your point. I mean, just because something isn't Hitler doesn't mean... Now, Mao and Stalin killed a lot more people. You should remember that. Yeah, but partly it was, it was generalized. It wasn't specifically race-based to wipe out races on the planet. It was just, they didn't give a fuck. And it was mostly their own people. Stupid man. You have to ask yourself. Why isn't he bringing up the plant in Fremont and the plant in Independence, Ohio? I don't know. Do they just have a really bad batting average? Stalin and Mao? Because I don't yes. think they do. 
I don't think they do. They This can't be an accident. It's on purpose. Just like it can't be an accident that I don't know that this place already has to play to research facilities and factories in the United States already. Yeah, they're they're batting what? Almost zero. Okay? Almost zero. Let's give them let's say they have a batting average of 100. 100. Mm -hmm. Okay. They have a batting average of 100. However, as bowling games go, that's I mean that's your that's your clearance point where you really feel like a bowler. If you can clear 100, you're okay. By the way, uh I might take a lot of these issues seriously, but I do not take this man seriously. So, if I if I don't get caught up emotionally the way you feel like I should, it's not because the issues aren't important. It's because this dickhead shouldn't be anywhere near a soft, a, a, a serious talking point around this stuff. If I switch teams. Uh-oh, Stu. Shouldn't have wore shorts. Shouldn't have wore shorts. They have a batting average of 600. They're failing on purpose. Oh, God. Right? Isn't it? No, no, you're a silly person. You're a silly person. This is getting very silly. It, it, what difference does it make? We're going to be at war with China in two years. Less 700 than 700 batting years. average is perfect? No. No, thousand, what is it? 1,000. 1,000. Yeah. So 900. Mm -hmm. 900. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can't expect him to know anything about sports. He's he's a rodeo clown. They're, their batting average is good if they're playing for the other team. <laughs> Wait, at what point do you realize that this company already has two plants in the United States and they've been operating for a while and we haven't turned communist? Well, I mean, Independence, Ohio might be a hotbed of commie activity, but you'll have to let us know. Ask Jim Jordan. Do we have the balls to say, I think they're playing for the other team? I don't, I don't, I don't know if that phrase and balls in the same sentence <clears throat> it, never mind. Just hard to believe all of these things could be mistakes, I think. is Yeah, that's, that's what he's been saying. And thank you, Stu, for trying to translate gibberish to all of us. It's still dumb. It's what you're saying. And it, it, it does, well, does you know seem what? difficult to be this bad at things. You know, we, we now know because we've seen the satellite pictures or we've seen the fighter pictures of the navigation system on the balloon. You know, because it was it's it was just such a coincidence that they had no control over where that balloon went, but it went over uh, all of our most important strategic missile sites. Yeah, asshole. We didn't believe that. What's wrong with you? Then strategic air command. And still didn't see anything. And then exited the country, uh, you know, right. Right over the the building where Trump had. Uh, gets paid to let Russian women have babies in the United States. Oh, we're not talking about that. It's there in uh, the ocean, South Carolina, or yeah, South Carolina, which, gosh, don't they have a lot of chemical plants? They have a lot of military stuff. Yeah, they also have a lot of cancer clusters. Hmm. That tricky, tricky jet stream. Or. Somebody's playing on the other side. Okay. The, the U. <laughs> All right. The U.S., nobody in the administration, and certainly not Governor Whitmer of Michigan, helped to guide the Chinese spy balloon over certain sites. Oy. Okay. Um, but that was, by the way, um, that was from a video that Glenn Beck put up called Why I Think War with China by 2025 is a done deal. Sorry, I take that back. It actually says why I think war with China by 2025 is done deal. A done deal would make grammatical sense. This is just is done deal. Um, I I mean, that's the kind of sentence you expect from someone whose face looks like that. It makes sense. Okay, never mind. I, you know what? He set me, he set me straight. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. Um, I, I, ugh. The, the amount, like, his show is effectively a, a coordinated panic attack to sell prepper food now. That's all it's for.
that you are surrounded by enemies at every turn, that e all of our enemies are way more functional and doing great, even when they're not, than we are. And America sucks. And all it would take is a slight flick for us to fall into absolute chaos. And yet he's going to have a show tomorrow. And a day after that. And the day after that. And the day after that. And we're going to have hurricanes and... And God help us, you know, shootings and domestic terror shit that we deal with all the time. And we're going to keep on humping like everybody else. Jesus. Like, at what point do his people have to, like, go, I, I, I feel like you're, you're a tick. You're a leech. And they're gonna they're gonna try to find they're gonna pour some salt on you or find some way to get you lanced or something. Cause eek. Anyways, uh, much love to you guys. Remember, tomorrow's show is a little little bit later in the day. It's four o'clock instead of three, uh, my time. And we will be on uh, indictment watch, no doubt. If I have to pop in early in the day or something, I very well might. And then Friday uh, in the morning show. Uh, the lovely folks from Crooks and Liars are going to be joining me for the second hour of the morning show. Very exciting. After my Saturday show, I get to jump straight in my car and drive to LA because I'm going to be there all weekend and into the week for the jam and all that kind of stuff. So Monday's shows will be from LA. And it's possible I might be able, instead of Thursday where I have to do sound check, where I might have to skip it, I could probably move Tuesday's show up. And just have one anyways, and people can watch it later. You know what I mean? Um, I'll see what I can do. That's what I'm hoping for. Anyways, take care of yourself and take care of somebody else. And remember, um, I, I know this. People are very upset when they hear me say this. But the world is not going to end.